Throwback Thursday, and I've ordered this thing, um, it's in this package, and what this is, is, uh, I've used Nintendo Zappers in the past. This is the NAS, NES gun, the light gun, the beam gun, whatever. Uh, it also happens to be super hackable, and it's a great base for hardware hacks. I love this kind of thing, I call it open-ish hardware, because it is not open source, but it sort of works as open source because you can kind of tell how it works and how it's put together. You can modify it pretty easily. And also there's a lot of information out there about it because it's been around forever. Um, so I'm going to show you how to disassemble one of these guys uh, and use it for hardware hacks. There's actually going to be a tutorial coming with an actual project in a couple weeks. But for now, this is, yes, the Nintendo Zapper. Originally it was in dark gray, and those are the ones I've worked with before. The orange one is exactly the same. Uh, they changed it apparently because uh, they didn't want kids being seen with this and possibly being seen as a threat. Understandable! Uh, so, yeah, I've messed those ones up enough and I wanted to have a clean one with like the original hardware. Uh, all of which I've lost out of the other ones to uh, take apart for you. So we've got the cable, of course, uh, and then there's this plug on the end, uh, Nintendo plug. You know, it's got these seven little hookups there. Let me get some good focus for you. Uh, yeah, you're probably already pretty familiar with this, but you might not have ever taken one apart before. Um, get some more light on here. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, there's our plug. And this comes apart uh, with some small difficulty. There's some tabs in here, uh, right here, that you can sort of see, uh, where you can shove a little screwdriver down there and kind of pry it out. Uh, and that's going to become useful in a moment here. Do I have a screwdriver that can do that? Yeah. Uh, then the zapper itself. Gorgeous, of course. Um, and this is assembled with screws that are really easy to remove. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, there we go, some nice focus. Okay, yeah, uh, pretty standard Phillips heads in here. Uh, given the age, oh, my bad, uh, flat heads on the small ones. Also, given the age of the gun and what it might have been through, some of these screws might be stripped. Uh, there's a number of ways of getting those out, but basically just try and use you know, an appropriate amount of force. You'll be able to get this apart. Screw number one. So you've got these separate plastic pieces, right? This one came out of here. Uh, take the plas gray plastic part off first. And then the orange part will be much easier to dismantle. This thing uh, works in a really cool way that you will see in a minute. Uh, so it doesn't shoot light itself. It's got a light sensor. And you used to be able to fool these things by shooting them at a light bulb. Uh, and they would detect that as a target pixel, a bright target on the screen. And then here's our like cool little branding pieces. Uh, however, in later versions, they apparently changed that so you couldn't do that hack anymore. They would turn the whole screen black when you pulled the trigger, which makes a great noise, by the way. It's so satisfying. <laughs> and uh, then it would do a, another screen that was all black, but with the target areas highlighted in light pixels, but they would flash at specific uh, frequencies, I think, and so it would be able to tell which target you were pointing at, and you couldn't fool it by just looking at a light bulb. Uh, so, yeah, tricksy children, of course, will always try and find ways around this, but, you know. Maybe honesty or just like practice is the best policy. Or hacking, you know. You can turn these into all kinds of stuff. So what I've done with these before is I've turned them. So one of them I uh, put a little laser pointer in and a spark fun voice recorder and 
playback kit in the handle. And I recorded my friend going pew, so that every time I pulled the trigger, the laser would fire, and it would go pew, which was just fantastic. Um, that one, I think, has been long lost to the ages. So now I've got uh, these, these screws out, um, and I need to dig out a small flathead for those guys. Um, I know, one sec. Oh, it's right here. Great. The other ones are pretty well embedded, but these two little screws are fairly accessible, so I can just use my multi-tool. This is the best little multi-tool. It's a Leatherman squirt. Oh my god, so good. Um, yeah, and then the other one, I just put a big blue LED in so that it would like very obviously light up because unfortunately, lasers and guns just aren't that impressive. It's really not, and I was very disappointed with that. Um, yeah. What I'm going to do with this eventually is turn it... If you're familiar with Mitch Altman's project, The TV Be Gone, uh, I've long wanted to turn one of these into a TV Be Gone. Basically, like, the idea of the TV Be Gone is that you're in a place and there's a TV on and you hate it and it's horrible and you're Mitch Altman, so you decide to build a circuit that broadcasts uh, universal off-codes for all TVs and uh, then you can, like, shoot it... Um, surreptitiously and no one will notice, hopefully, that you are the one who has turned off the television uh, but you get to enjoy your dinner or whatever in peace. Uh, and this seems like, this obviously takes away the surreptitious part of that. It's gonna be pretty obvious who did it, but you're also gonna look really cool and feel like a technological vigilante, which is, you know, who doesn't want that? Okay, so here we are. We've got the cable at the bottom. We've, I'm gonna stop this rustling. Cable at the bottom. <laughs> and uh, I've got all the screws taken out here. That's uh, five big screws in total, big Phillips screws, and two little flat heads. And this just lifts off. Come on, there we go. This is so gorgeous. I love this thing. Um, one of the cool things about this is it has, just for heft, uh, they have this metal weight in here. I assume it's just for heft because it's not connected to anything and it just looks like a lump of metal. Um, it's kind of cool. Got this little like, shiny thing going on. Um, then you've got this, which I'm not sure if it's just another weight or performs some function. Again, it's not hooked up to anything. I think it's just another weight. So they thought a lot about how this would actually feel. And I love that. I love seeing those details that are beyond just like the electronic circuitry, right? Then you get to this piece, which is the light gun assembly, uh, or light sensor assembly, and yeah, you get another light up in here, but uh, if you can see, there's a little sort of LED type deal going on in there, and uh, yeah, some capacitors, what do you got? Some cables going to it, a transistor, yeah. Just a whole little sensor rig, and it's actually quite well labeled as well. It's got these weights and screws out of here. Um, so I'm going to disconnect this piece here. If I can. <laughs> Might be another use for the screwdriver. And you know what, I'm not going to be using this anyway, so, um, hmm. Well, there's one more part I'm going to show you before I take it off. Uh, this little couple of power cables, those come from this switch, which is pulled by the trigger. And uh, we've got some more little screws in here sort of hiding that. So before I rip that out, um, let's take a look at the trigger mechanism and how it's done in here. Um, notice also, down here in the, uh, handle, there's a better word for that, <laughs> is this stress relief bit. Um, they've got these, you know, these are partly for screws to hold the thing together, but they're also for strain relief so that, you know, if someone yanks on this, it's a child's toy, it's gonna get yanked on. Uh, it's not gonna destroy everything, you know? Pretty cool. So let's take off this piece, because that's how you get to look at the 
a trigger. We got three big screws and then a few small ones sort of holding it together. Um, this just lifts out. Do, do, do. It's not connected to anything down here. It's just this one braided cable that comes in, or twisted cable. Okay, and we're going to open this up. And yeah, another reason this is really friendly hardware, they only use two types of screws in here. Just the big uh, Phillips heads and the small flat heads. I love that this is what I'm doing on a Thursday morning. <laughs> I guess it's afternoon now, but yeah. So yeah, the, the like big blue LED thing works pretty well and it's kind of impressive. And of course, everybody loves seeing the zapper actually functional as like an actual accessory. But at the same time, uh, it just seems like it doesn't do it justice, you know? Uh, and the way that I've done these hacks before, I'll show you in a second. Um, in fact, we don't even need to. Uh, what I'm going to do is take some conductive tape. When the trigger goes, it moves this piece back, right? You see that? And uh, all I've done with these triggers is put some conductive tape, like copper tape, back here and some on there, and that creates a switch. So without even modifying this piece, you don't have to take this apart at all. In order to modify it, uh, you can in fact just put some little conductive pieces in there and have it fire when you pull the trigger. And that way you preserve this awesome mechanism that makes this beautiful noise, uh, and it doesn't interfere with it at all. So I love that, but I'm still going to take it apart and show you. <laughs> Um, and then the other cool thing um, about taking the plug apart, like I mentioned before, uh, the Nintendo plug at the other end of this cable that has like seven pins on it, uh, you do have to disassemble the cable or at least have a really good idea of which color of wire goes where. I did document this once but a long, long ago. Uh, and I have no idea where that went. But um, that means that if you have other circuitry that doesn't fit inside the gun itself, you can put it at the other end of the cable and then just tuck that into like a holster or whatever and you're good. Uh, and then you, you know, I think it's cool to keep the cable on there because it's like very clearly a, uh, you know, a vintage item and not just like some kind of look-alike or whatever. Okay, so here we go. Trigger mechanism! Uh, this type of switch is used in robotics a lot. It's called a limit switch, um, but also here it's just being used as a trigger. They have a really cool little feeling. Like, oh, they make the greatest noises. Uh, can I get this back in here? <laughs> Did not take a look at it before I pulled it out. Go in there. Oh, it was diagonal. That's how it goes. Cool. Yeah. Got these little pins for mounting. The whole thing is so well constructed. Like, I just, I love this. Um, a couple different springs in here. The one that provides resistance and the one that moves this little lever to provide this sort of snap. See how, like, it gets to this point and then it snaps. Uh, and then this other little spring to pull it back forward again. It's elegant. It's just great. I'm going to stop spazzing out about how lovely this is and put it back together. Um, but I won't subject you to that. Anyway, so these are the guts of a Nintendo Zapper uh, light sensor gun. And I'm going to be doing a project with it. So stay tuned to see the TV be gun. Uh, I'm probably just going to work on it over the next couple of Thursdays for Throwback Thursday. Uh, and yeah, maybe it'll help us throw back to an even earlier time when there were no DVs.